In this episode, episode six of The Daily Hustle, we talk about being confrontational without losing your cool. Broadcasting from the box that rocks and Thrive15.com world headquarters, it's The Daily Hustle with Daniel McKenna. What's going on, guys? This is Daniel McKenna over here, Marshall Morris over there. This is episode six of The Daily Hustle. Hustle, the show where we bring you value by answering your questions that you have on Thrive15.com, also on Twitter and Instagram, and we're building a community of people that are making their businesses better together. We're growing together. is a really cool thing. We're leaning on the wisdom of the mentors and the personal experiences we've had of working with hundreds of different businesses and giving you the straight truth, getting to the facts. The facts, Marshall. How are you doing, Marshall? I'm doing pretty spectacularly. I actually just met with a Delrict Research out yeah. of New Orleans. Yeah. I was just coaching with them. And uh, when I say with them, I don't mean the people that there are. are yeah, we didn't really mention the people that are standing in the background. They're putting, I don't know what they're putting up on. Stickers. Stickers, stickers of some sort. Stickers. Okay. Um, yeah. But just finished coaching with them. Uh, and they are awesome. They're just crushing the game. They are uh, hiring more scheduling coordinators to get them to where they uh, need to go yeah. in terms of like booking more appointments. Um, but then additionally, they're marketing more. And so that's kind of their orbit. Hire more people, market more, hire more people, market more. And it's a cool deal. That's a, that's a good problem to have. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Marshall, I know you only have about 20 minutes here today before you have to get on to your next client. So we're going to go ahead and, and dive right in to question numero uno here. Probably the only question for the day. Let's be honest. Probably the only question. But let's get some mojo. Let's get some mojo here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That'll work. Go ahead and give me the question. Okay. Question number one. Okay. I wanted to get better at being confrontational and keeping my cool. Not coming off as a jerk, but just assertive. This one comes from Megan. Ooh. This one comes from Megan. Yeah. And uh, Megan is down in Florida. Okay? Nice. She's uh, operating with a business. Okay. Down in Florida. Yeah may or may not be one of our clients okay may or may not i don't want to out her specifically you wouldn't want to out her specifically but she yeah. may or may not be one of our clients down in florida so megan i know you're listening this one's for you this one's for you megan all right so let's dive into this real quick here um because of the time constraints you know normally we like to have a little bit of fun yeah we're not gonna have any fun here at all today no fun at this all. is gonna be like <laughs> like this is gonna be like you're studying for a biology exam mm just not really fun. Mm. I liked biology. Unless you're into that sort of thing. I'm kidding. I didn't like biology. Okay. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Uh, Marshall, give me give me the... How many... How many? I mean, because we do research here. We get all the facts together. I want to see how many... Okay, seven. There's seven main things here for you, Megan, and anybody else at home that is dealing with this same thing. This is a big deal. You're dealing with humans, so you're going to have disagreements. You're going to have miscommunications. You're going to have where expectations don't meet right? Because right. we're dealing with other humans here, mm -hmm. especially if you're in like a leadership or management position. So this is a really big deal. Um, and we've got some fire, some fire stuff here for you. So go ahead and hit me with number one here, Marshall. Okay. Number one, to be a successful leader, you must be able to control your emotions. To be a successful leader, you must be able to control your emotions. Yep. Go ahead and hit me with some of the, the mentor wisdom there. Give me okay. the quote. So specifically... Uh, Daniel Goleman. He's a best-selling author of a book called Emotional Intelligence. Yep. Emotional Intelligence. It's awesome. It talks about the EQ, not IQ, but EQ. Okay. And Daniel Goleman, he says, if your emotional abilities are not in hand, if you don't have self-awareness, if you're not able to manage your distressing emotions, if you can't have empathy and effective relationships, then no matter how smart you are, you are not going to get very far. So we talked about Daniel Goleman yesterday on the show. That's right more emotional intelligence stuff. And we're setting the stage here for you. Unless you can control your own emotions, you can't be a successful leader because when you're reacting to situations and you have confrontation, you have things happen during the day, if you're a purely reactionary person, you're no longer in control. You're responding only to the things that are happening around you. And people will notice that. Mm hmm People will notice that and know that, okay, maybe this person isn't the person I want driving the ship, the captain of the ship, because this person is freaking out every time they see waves. Maybe I should not be on this ship. Sure. Furthermore, if you have a big vision and you're trying to communicate this big vision to people to get them on board, to get them to, to 
fight for you and fight for the company and you're freaking out or you can't control your emotions maybe, and we're not talking about you specifically, Megan, just anybody that can't um, dial it in when they need to, to be able to say, okay, let's calm this part down. Here's the vision. How long are people going to stick around? Like how, how long are people going to say, yeah, that's, that's my guy. That's who I want to follow. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Does that make sense to the people at home? Okay. So we just wanted to set, set the stage there. Number one, super important, especially if you're the captain of the ship, you've got to be able to control your emotions and communicate in a way that benefits you and benefits the company. Does that say, does that mean you don't freak out? Not necessarily. Does that mean you don't yell at somebody? Not necessarily. Does that mean you, uh, I don't know, refuse to answer a question right now and answer it later? Not necessarily. It means that you are choosing how you want to respond as opposed to just responding. Maybe you do need to freak out. Maybe you do need to yell at somebody. I've seen around here people have gotten yelled and cursed out sort of thing, and then all of a sudden the world got right again. It's like we got on the same page, right? So sometimes that does need to happen. We're just saying you choose how you want to respond. Okay, let's go on to number two. Number two here, because we're setting the stage there. This is number two. Number two is if it is a situation that needs to be addressed, know that it is in everyone's best interest to approach it head on. Don't kind of, sort of, maybe next time. Okay. You got to be hard on the issue, but soft on the person. So, you know, when you're talking to somebody and you're like, you know, you know, maybe next time if you, I don't know. I mean, I know you probably, I know it's my fault, but if you could just kind of do that differently, what kind of message does that send? Uh, you're not confident. You're not very confident. Not very confident. Okay. Kind of falsely kind. And if I'm the person that, that needs to get my head on straight, if I'm the person that you need to talk to me, I'm the person that messed up, you're saying, hey, maybe, sort of. Does that instill any faith or respect or confidence of me in you? No. Give me some, give me some story time here. Some story, we might need some music here. You might need some music with, for some story time with Marshall. Because I want to hear from some personal experience of here in the office, maybe someone you know, maybe someone you've worked with, maybe somebody who, how do you handle this correctly? Well, I will tell you, for story time, there's a couple, uh, there's an individual in our office, literally had to have this conversation, and uh, we'll say it was a he, because a female would never do this. Sure. Um, it, he was not meeting his daily criteria, and literally i had to go up to him and say you know if you don't get it together by the end of the week i'm going to fire you keep up the good work you've been doing a better job today but i want you to know if you don't keep it up i'm going to fire you how do how what was the end result of that what was the end result of that conversation? That person's been an all-star ever since. Real talk, this person has just been kicking butt ever since in his uh, daily activities. Um, furthermore, uh, I had a couple individuals that were consistently showing up late. Okay? Yep. A couple individuals consistently showing up late. Had a very candid conversation, said, hey, you know what? Warren Buffett says it takes 20 years to build a reputation and only five minutes to lose it. What does that mean to you? He goes, well, if I show up five minutes late, then it's probably null and void everything that I was doing up until then. And you go, yeah. So post this on your desk and let that be a mantra for you. Show up on time. And it was a constructive way, but it was very candid and very direct. Tell me what happens if you do not do this. Tell me what happens if you, we've sort of talked about this in previous episodes, where you feel like you either lack the confidence to approach the issue head on, or you're sort of trying to be nice and not really hurt the other person's feelings. So we'll say dude A, you were talking about earlier. Yeah. The guy that you said, hey, you've got to shape up or you're out. Yeah. What happens if you're like, hey, man, I need you to try a little bit harder. I know you're, I know you're working hard. Um, I just sort of think, uh, you know, you're working hard. I get it. I see you working hard. I kind of feel like, though, if you could do a little bit better, that would be cool. And then behind the scenes... You're talking to other management, and you're like, yeah, this guy doesn't get it together. we got to fire him. Then it's an unethical blindside. You end up blindsiding the employee, and 
uh, he or she doesn't exactly know specifically where they missed their mark. And then you blindside them, you fire them, and they never knew that they were doing something wrong in the first place. So this is a big deal. Yeah. This is a big deal. If we're talking about how to handle the people in your company in an ethical way that benefits you and benefits them, you have to have the conversation. Sam's just knocking over boards back there. I don't know if it got picked up in the audio. Probably. It sounded like... That's what it sounded like. Kind of sounded like that. Yeah. Um, if, you're having, if you don't have these conversations with them, it's not fair to them because they don't know the level of severity you're saying. They're not, they don't know where they actually stand, so they can't adjust their behavior. So it's more like you're kind of like doing like, instead of me giving you this, maybe I need to give you a shot. Get the doctor. Maybe I need to give you a shot, and it's going to sting, but this shot is what's probably going to save your life here in this company. And instead of doing that, you're like, uh, you know, I know a shot would sting. Let's just put like a Band-Aid over it and... Hope it gets better. And, you know, we'll hope it gets better. And meanwhile, you're back in the back, you're telling the family, yeah, there's no chance he's going to make it. He's only got a Band-Aid on. That's right. It's exactly the same thing. It's exact. I mean, if we're talking about metaphors here, analogies. I mean, I would much rather just fix the issue with a shot. Okay. I, so, so that was number two. Number two, if it's a situation that you have to address, it's in your best interest to approach it head on. Be hard on the issue, meaning don't be soft, don't kind of, don't maybe – Clear expectations. This is what we need to happen. This is what happens if you don't. This is what we need to happen. This is where you are. Because that's being kind to them, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number three. Number three. Here we go. Number three. Uh, so number three is to have a conversation that is not emotional, but it's productive. You must have their trust. Trust is everything in a relationship. And then there's a quote that supports this. Go for it. Gary Vaynerchuk. Founder of Wine Library TV. VaynerMedia.com. VaynerMedia.com. I'm not even sure it's a .com. It's VaynerMedia. It's yeah. probably a .com. Yeah. So um, he says, in business pitches and meetings with employees, my goal is to get everything out in the open as fast as possible. I have to establish trust right away so we can get to what each other really wants. So in any type of relationship, it's not any different in business. We're talking about communication with humans. So for me and you to have a productive conversation, you need to have some sort of level of trust in me if I'm saying I need you to do it a different way. Mm -hmm. If you don't trust me at all, all you're going to hear is that I'm upset, and meanwhile you're going to be thinking, okay, how do I just turn off the upset part, or how do I go somewhere else? I mean, that's, that's, what, you're, that's what you're hearing if you don't have any sort of trust at all. Your employee or your coworker says, sit there and be like, totally get it and in their mind they're saying i'm looking for a new job that's gonna happen right yeah if you don't establish some sort of trust now if they have some trust and they have some respect there and you've already developed that then you can have a productive conversation that isn't emotional isn't driven by like anger or driven by stress or driven by whatever it's more like hey sam i know you knocked over the wood earlier while we were filming I know you didn't mean to, but you can never knock over the wood over during filming again. And if Sam sort of likes me, or at least sort of trusts me, or at least has some sort of respect for me, he knows that I'm not going to screw him by telling him the wood, the, like, the wood is what matters. Right. Right? Yeah. Because if he doesn't have those things, he's probably like, he's always on me about knocking over the wood. He's doing that all the time. I can't work. This guy's crazy. I cannot work here. I'm going, to, I'm going to go somewhere else and knock over a bunch of wood. <laughs> <laughs> so that's number three. Number three, that was a Gary Vaynerchuk quote. And the reason that quote is in there is because this guy is somebody that deals with thousands of employees. Thousands. They have different offices all over the world. London, uh, LA, Chattanooga, New York. That he, I mean, he manages all these people. He's in charge. He's the guy. He's pitching businesses all the time, creative agencies all the time. So we're talking about how do you communicate with people on a large scale when you're communicating all the time. And he says, in pitches and meetings, my goal is to get everything out in the open as fast as possible. We, he wants to establish a level of trust immediately. So then we can get past all the BS and all the, I wonder what they're really thinking. He's saying this, but I wonder what. He wants to get it out in the open so that everybody wins faster. 
cool. Okay, so that's number three. Um, let's go on to uh, let's go on to number four. Number four. Okay, you must show competence to gain trust. If you aren't good at your job, people don't really care about what you think. What you think is a <laughs> is a leader. That's right. You're like, man, that guy. He's a he's a nice guy, but he has no idea what he's talking about. Yeah. So give me the, give me the this is from the Harvard Harvard Business Review. Give me that quote real quick, and we'll move on. Okay. Even if everyone likes you, you have to be competent to be trusted, says David Destano. Destano? Destano. Destano, I think. We'll reach out to him. We'll figure out we'll how find to pronounce. Out. Yeah. Um, that means regularly updating your own skills and following through on commitments. You should also avoid trying to be an expert in all things. Those in the know will spot faked knowledge immediately. Harvard so, Business Review. Yeah, so if I act like... If I go up to one of our coders and say, look... The PHP is all wrong. Yeah. You get the brackets here and the squares here. Very. I've read some articles, and the ones and the zeros, they're, they're out of place. You got to rearrange them. You got to rearrange them. Aren't you, doing, aren't you using Ajax? That's my favorite coding language. And probably they'll, act, they'll know immediately, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Right? That's right. So their level of respect for me doesn't, like, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's move on, because that one's kind of an, I mean... Something to think about. Something to think about. Number five. Number five. Back to number four, just real quick. If you're not hustling, if you're not working hard, if you're not producing well, your level of respect does this, especially if you're asking the other party to do what you're not actually doing. If I'm asking you to work hard and he's, you see me obviously not working hard, or I'm asking you to produce at a certain level and I'm obviously not producing at a certain level, you probably won't like me and you probably won't stick around for very, very long. That's right. Okay. Number five. Number five. Let's go. Number five, you must show that you care about this person. Give me the John Maxwell quote. So John Maxwell, uh, he, you know, actually shares something in common with one of our mentors. Go on. He is a Golden Gavel Award winner from Toastmasters International. A little fun fact about fact. John White, yeah. Maxwell. Um, care without candor creates dysfunctional relationships. Candor without care creates distance, distant relationships. Caring values the person while candor values the person's potential. Okay. So let's that was some good care and candor stuff. Yeah, makes sense. You know, if you value the person that's caring, candor is what values his potential. We sort of talked about that a little bit earlier. Hit me with the Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt says, Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. So again, if we're trying to establish trust because we talked about that being necessary to have good communication here. There's some level of trust. If Marshall doesn't think I care about him at all, the likelihood that he wants to go the extra mile for me and the likelihood that he wants to work hard and the likelihood that he wants to um, perform at a level that will gain my respect, it's not going to be there, right? Because yeah. if I don't care... Now, if I show him I do care and I do care about his potential and I do care about where he's going in life and what he wants to do, and I have some sort of human side to me, it's much more likely that he's going to be ready to run through a wall to get the job done. He's going to bring the creativity that's in him. He's going to bring the hustle that's in him that wouldn't be there if, I, if he knows I don't care and if this is just a job and he's just here till five and then he gets to go home and really like enjoy the rest of his day. I wish I got to go home at five. <laughs> that's a different story. That's a that's a different story. Anything? Do you have any? Do you have any examples there? I know you're putting on the spot here. Do you have any examples there of people? Maybe you've seen in the building do complete one eighties with where they were to where they ended up going, or at least ended up like heading towards, just because they knew that the people here cared about them enough to shoot them straight. Yeah. To absolutely. make them work their tail off. But they knew that we actually cared. We actually cared about them as people. We cared about their goals. Th that's one thing that you can't fake. And you just got to, like, sincerely communicate how much you care. And once somebody understands that, they'll, they'll get fired up. They'll, they'll work and listen to what you have to say. Because p that attention, that attention is a... Is a highly sought after commodity it's a it's a value that attention and feeling that attention okay feeling that attention is just worth volumes 
in pe- that's what people want. It's in our innate human nature. You have to show that you understand and care about Sam. We're over here. Sam's getting distracted by the people putting up stickers on the wall. Sam was just staring off into the distance, watching the sticker people. You have to show that you care about the people that you are working with because they don't get that everywhere else. They're not going to get that at every other job. And if they feel at home and they feel cared for and they feel like we're on the same team, we're approaching the same goals, I've got my goals as a company, but I know that you have these goals and let's work towards them together, they'll, they'll be with you forever. That's right. They will work harder for you than anywhere else. I've seen it a hundred times. A hundred times. Mm-hmm. We'll literally hire people with no discernible skills or maybe some discernible skills, but checkered past as far as like work sort of thing. And all of a sudden they're all stars. And it's a really cool thing to see. Okay. Number six, number six, we're running out of time. Number six here. Clear expectations are manager's best friend. This is from Arthur Greeno. He is a multiple location Chick-fil-A franchiser. Yep. Which is a pretty cool deal. He's a cool deal. Because the systems within Chick-fil-A and the workflows and the processes that they have are second to none. They're awesome. Okay. And what he says is whenever something is not met or expectations are not met, he either says, did you not know or did you not care? Did you not know or did you not care? Those are the two options. Those are two options. Because he knows that Chick-fil-A systems, they train on what should be done. And so he's asking, did you not know? Were you not educated enough? And in that case, that's my fault. Mm -hmm. Or did you not care? Did you know, but you didn't have the diligence to execute it? And also, if I'm the manager, I know there's only a couple of times where you get to say, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know, when you're like, okay, this guy's never going to know. He's never going to know. And then you hire and uh, you just replace him. And then you just replace him. Meanwhile, uh, Chick-fil-A is a lot better than McDonald's. Chick-fil-A is a lot better than KFC. Chick-fil-A is a lot better. Has that like customer service feel to it yeah. because these have the ch- these checklists, because they have high expectations, and because they cl- have set clear expectations for the people that work there. Your job is to do this, 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 specifically. Mm-hmm. And at the end of your shift, I'm going to follow up on this, 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 specifically i know i've worked there i worked chick-fil-a <laughs> when i was 15 i worked at the chick-fil-a in the tulsa woodland hills mall i was probably giving you uh i was probably giving you chicken probably well probably maybe me. not you maybe me maybe not you maybe me it's like who's that six foot eight guy that's like nine years old but he's huge <laughs> <laughs> that would have been marshall number seven number seven clear expectations uh, number six one more time clear expectations is what sets the boundaries, what sets the guidelines for communication. If we clearly set those expectations, if I value you enough to give you the honest thing, this is what it really is, and you value me enough to give me your honest thing, this is where I really am, and we have that, that baseline, we have that we're on the same page, that's what sets the plane for everything. Because if we're on that same page and then someone started going, boo, Well, at least we knew we were on the same page, and it's not like, uh, well, I just didn't do a good job of communicating. Okay, number seven. Last one here, number seven. Number seven. You got to hug, kick, and hug. Hug, kick, and hug. Carrot and stick approach. So this is is how you deal with confrontation when you have to deal with confrontation. Yeah, you got to hug, kick, and hug. This is how you, someone's not doing their job, but you don't want to just completely blast them. That's right. You don't want to lose your cool. You want to control your emotions. You want to respond in the way that you want to respond. And maybe maybe that is you need to yell at them. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. But if you're trying to do this, give me what's the hug kick hug? Give me the hug kick hug. You got to come up to them, say, hey, specifically, this is what you're doing well. Secondly, candidly, this is where you're not meeting expectations. And thirdly, you approach them with a hug. Hey, this is what you're doing well, in addition to uh, the previous thing that I said well. Hey, you're still a good person. And why do you do this? You do this because the comfort of having a compliment or a praise is comforting and disarming. And then they're actually going to listen to you. But if you just immediately go kick, they're not going to listen to you. And you become that source of correction. It's about, yeah, it, it might, you might sound like, oh, that sounds, that sounds cheesy. That sounds like, oh, I'm just going to butter them up and then be soft with them. And then that's not what we're saying. We're saying as a that's human... Right. You're going to get defensive if somebody comes straight at you. 
You gotta go. I gotta go. He's gotta go. As a human, you're gonna get defensive if someone comes straight at you, regardless of what it is, even if you're in the wrong. See, you, buddy. Even if oh ooh oh thank you. Even if you are totally in the wrong. Thanks for. I mean, you could have like walked under the camera, but that's. Even if you are totally in the wrong, even if you messed up, if someone comes to you and says, you messed up, immediately you're going to be like, whoop, defensive, because that's just how we are as humans, okay? So the hug, kick, hug is a way for you to attempt to lower those defensive walls and to establish that trust, establish that respect before you get into the candor, okay? So... Daily wins of the week. I mean, I, I'm so far away from the keyboard, I, tip, I typically uh, would play some music here, um, but instead, we're just going to go solo. We're going to go solo here. Daily wins of the week. This is a big deal. Um, the Tulsa Oilers. Tulsa Oilers, they're a minor league hockey team based in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, you can go on the web and find out about them. They've been working with us now for a year. Their attendance has doubled. A uh, doubled. Twice as much. So, as the people that are going to these hockey games, I don't know if you like hockey. I don't know if you hate hockey. Let's say it wasn't hockey. Let's say it was, uh, I don't know. Sam, what do you like? What kind of event do you like? Food. It was a food event. <laughs> it was a food event. And only half the people, only some people showing up to your restaurant. And we got double the amount of people to show up at your restaurant. The, the principles are the same. Okay? That's what's, ha what's happening here with the Tulsa Oilers. Really cool deal. Their attendance has absolutely specifically doubled. We might even throw in the video here, or you can find that on the Thrive Time channel on YouTube. Um, if you want to be part of our next workshop, Sam, show them, show them the workshop here. Thrivetimeshow.com slash workshops. Thrivetimeshow.com slash workshops. Um, the workshops are going to change everything for your business. It's two days, action-packed, that is going to give you the specific practical steps of how do I grow my business? Where are you now? Where do you want to be? Let's build those steps in between. And they're changing businesses every week and it's a really, really cool deal. I would feel bad if you did not know it was an option. If you're out there and you're actually hustling and you're actually wanting to do something and you didn't know this was an option and it was right here and in two days you could change your business and you did not know about it, I would legitimately feel bad because this is a really cool deal. Again, thrivetimeshow.com slash workshops if you want to learn more about it or go to thrive15.com, fill out your business evaluation. Show them the book there, Sam. You're going to get that book. Start here. Start here. You're going to get that for free, for free 99. That's an ebook for free 99. And uh, it's going to be really big. It's going to be really big for you. It really is. And I legitimately feel like you need to know about this. If you don't know about this, at least give it a look. Okay. So we're finishing this, we're finishing the show solo. Let's hit you with a summary real, real quick here. Summary. Again, we're talking about getting better at being confrontational and keeping my cool, not coming off as a jerk, but being assertive. Number one, you must be able to control your emotions. Number two, if it's a, a situation you're going to address, approach it head on. Don't beat around the bush. Don't maybe sort of kind of hard on the issue, soft on the person. Hard on the issue, soft on the person. Number three, to have a conversation that is not emotional but is productive, you need to have some sort of level of trust in there. So start building trust now, knowing that you're going to have those confrontational talks later. They're going to happen. You need to have that trust there. Number four, you must show competence to gain trust. So if you want your people to respect you, make sure that you are doing the things that you need to do to build that respect. Make sure you are working. Make sure you are producing. Make sure they see you in a light that is favorable so that when you need to come to them and say, I need you to do this differently, they're like, okay, that, yeah, that makes sense. This guy's a good guy. This guy's a hard worker. This guy's produces and not a, this is the laziest guy I know. I don't know why he's getting on to me. I'm obviously better than this. Okay, cool. Number five, you must show that you care about the person. We're talking about care and candor. Nobody cares about how much you know until they know how much you care as Theodore Roosevelt. By the way, Theodore Roosevelt, I didn't get it. We didn't have a chance to, to dive in this. We'll do it on the next episode, maybe. He was just a man, a man's man. We'll get into more Theodore Roosevelt later. Number six, clear expectations are a manager's best friend. You got to set those expectations, have both parties right there. No, specifically, this is specifically what needs to happen, and they need to be able to communicate back to you specifically. I know this is what I need to happen, and then that way you can move forward. Until that happens, it's more of like, it's kind of like vagary, and you're not really sure, and you're sort of 
get mad at the other person, but they didn't know they were supposed to do a certain thing. Okay. Number seven, the hug, kick, hug. You might think it's a cheesy way to do it, but what it's doing is you're lowering the natural defenses of a human to say, hey, remember that trust we built earlier? Remember that care I showed you earlier? It's still there. That hasn't changed. I need this specifically to change. I'm going to be hard on the issue, but soften the person because I like you or soften the person because if you are able to change, I want you around. I want you to be here. I want you to be part of the team. Okay, that's all we got for today. Uh, I appreciate you being here. Again, find us on Twitter and on Instagram. Email us, info at thrive15.com, or go on to thrive15.com to ask us questions. Your question might be the next one we answer. Thank you so much for being here. Daniel McKenna, Marshall Morris is sometimes over there. Daily Hustle Show, Episode 6. See you next time. <laughs>